Hi, I'm Professor Jeff Cunningham of Arizona State University and host of Iconic Voices. Our icon of the day is Michael Milken, named one of the 75 most influential people of the 21st century. Welcome, Michael. It's just nice to be in the 21st century, and it's great to see you. When I think of you as a philanthropist, it sounds like you're having more fun giving away money than you had making it. When you talk about having fun, <clears throat> I financed more than 3,000 companies. I only had one CEO ever tell me he was in it for the money. And so I think one of the lessons to be learned, whether you're in the field of communication, is do you have a passion for it? Do you have an idea? Does that idea have value? We have many people that visit us with ideas and things they want to do. Um, and so in the building we're in today, we have six floors. Four floors are nonprofit, two are for profit. So we have people come and visit us on our for-profit floors that belong on our non-profit floors because they have a great idea. It's just not a viable as a for-profit idea. I think for me, the, the enjoyment was, can you build something? Can you create jobs? Can you empower an individual? And whether that individual is being empowered as Steve Wynn, who I saw as an adult Walt Disney, or Ted Turner, who had this idea of a station that you can get through a cable wire out of the sky. Uh, or Bill McGowan, who was going to build a company to take on the largest company in the world, AT&T. He had 35 employees when AT&T had 1.4 million. Or Sam Walton, that I never provided capital to, but I met in 1974, and Sears, was a thousand times bigger. They had a thousand times the number of employees and a thousand times the revenue. But the facts are the Sears model could not compete with the Walmart model. And many of the other models could not compete with Steve Wynn. And AT&T could not compete with fiber optics and Bill McGowan, even though they had 1.4 million to the new technology coming and what new dynamics would be in telecommunications. And so they changed. So that is invigorating. And for me, when I think back on my own lifetime, providing capital to Reg Lewis in 1986 and 87. Beatrice? At Beatrice Foods. Booked in, for me, kind of my life's work. In 1965, I changed my life because I wanted to make sure we had access to capital and the American dream was live and well for everyone. Reg Lewis, an African-American, buying something and outbidding everyone else and having someone give him a billion dollars was a signal that it was available to you all. The year before, we provided money for an individual that was you know, a woman to buy one of the Fortune 500 companies, the first time a woman in America in 1986 ever controlled one of the Fortune 500 companies that she didn't inherit. And so these changes today, 27, 28 years later, as I travel around the country and spend time with African American groups, this was in many ways, their emancipation on the business that Reg Lewis, that an African-American had equal access to more than a billion dollars in capital. 